The purpose of this online tutorial is to familiarize you with one of several varieties of procedures to check material in and out of the field, in this case using ArcPad version 10 software and ArcPad or ArcMap version 10.1 software as well. What you're looking at right now is uh, Arc Catalog, and I'm showing you Arc Catalog first because there's a little bit of setup that's involved before you start creating a project for deployment to the field. You'll see here I have a folder called Check In and Check Out. Other uh, workshops I've attended have said to have both a Check In folder and a Check Out folder, but what you can do within this folder is manage your, the contents of your folder as long as you make sure that you have some backup copies. So I've gone ahead already, this is a related, this example is based on a project, a mapping project that's being conducted on some University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire property. And I have, that's where my naming comes from. I have a check-in and check-out folder that I created here. So you're going to want to have a check-in, check-out folder. It doesn't really matter what you name it as long as you, you know that this is the folder where everything's housed. I have here, I specify that someone should have their username after it, but however you want to set up your naming scheme is up to you as long as you're standard on it. Within that check-in, check-out folder, I have a database I created. Now this could vary if you're using a server-based uh, GIS or ArcMap or not. In this case, I have the students, or if you're a student in the class, you're going to want to make your geodatabase in here. Within that geodatabase, this is when you're going to want to, going into this, and this is a big part of getting data ready for the field, is know what you're going to be collecting out in the field. Don't prepare to go out in the field without knowing what you're going to collect. So no, let's say if you're looking at benches, in this case in the property, there's benches in different states of repair and need of replacement. If you're going out there and you're looking at benches, you want to make sure that you have something to where you're going to have a numbering system with those benches, you're going to have something where you're going to want to have a notes field to describe them, and also some type of a categorization scheme of the health of those benches. That should all be done within this database because you want to be able to expedite your data collection time as much as possible, not to mention eliminate the possibility of errors. This should all be prepared for ahead of time. This is something that you will have gotten in your previous GIS classes, but when it comes to getting data ready for the field, this is of the utmost. Do not create a geodatabase and start matching feature classes until you have this information set. Once you have that information set and known, you can create your feature classes. So in here you would go new feature class and you would make whatever feature class you are. Are you collecting point data? Are you collecting polygon data? Are you collecting line data? I have in here some feature classes already made. I create. I have a clip 5 meter one. This is uh, something I generated from a digital elevation model. I have GPS points from a navigation course. I just put these in here to give a variety of different data types. So you have a raster, you have a line, you have a polygon file, and, and well actually you have two of those and of course you have your point file. All of that information together, when you're done with it, then you're going to want to create a project. So this is a preview of the project. I'm going to go ahead and minimize Arc Catalog and bring up Arc Map. This is the project. Now when you create this project, it's very important that you bring in the file with the coordinate system and the projection that you want first, because that'll set what you have. It's best to have everything in the same projection, but let's say you're not able to. Make sure that you bring in a file, or feature class I should say, of the projection you want. So good GPS points, point boundary, and new shooting zone, these are all UTM, NAT A3, zone 15. I brought those in first, and then I brought this in last. Why? Because this happens to be in a different projection. It's best to reproject it, but I brought that in. I just want to point out to you, bring this in last, otherwise your projections will be off. Once that's done, you're going to want to set the extent of the view. Why? Because when you deploy this to the field, 
whatever your view extent is on here is what you're going to have on your GPS unit in the field. This is a very good thing because raster files can be very big and the memory on your GPS unit is not the same as the memory on your computer. You don't want to have a lot of memory taken up by a raster file, not to mention don't go crazy bringing in multiple raster files and for that matter data sets unless you need them. The less clouding up of what you have in the field, the better. I also take this time to set my symbology. Now the cartography here is nothing to be desired. Uh, it definitely could use work, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I have it to where I set this as um, striation. It's actually a biohazard background. Why? Because this is a no shooting zone for a paintball match. I have that. These are uh, flags that need to be navigated to for it. These are green triangles. You can change it. I have the transparency set on here so you can still see what's going on in the background if you're wandering around in your GPS and wondering what's going on behind that. Set your information now because what you save now is going to matter for what you're deploying. Once you're happy with what you have, go ahead and save that. What I do is I make sure that I keep within my naming scheme. Here I have Priory, which is the name of the property, and then my username again. I'm all happy with that. I'm just going to save it. You would do save as if it was the first time. Once that's saved, now I'm ready to deploy. Keep in mind, I'm deploying it, and when I deploy it, I'm going to take all my domains and all that good information within that geo database in this deployment. This is the difference between copying and pasting a folder just using your regular file manager. I'm all happy with this. I'm going to say get data for ArcPad. That out. To check out my data, I'm going to go ahead and hit this. Get data for ArcPad welcome screen. And here what you have is you have the option for your actions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say check out all database layers only. Then for here, I'm going to export this as a 2000. What I'm doing is I'm checking out these database layers and what that allows me to do is take those domains with them. So all those fields when I want to have that maximum efficiency of data collection, I'm going to take that with. I'm also setting this as background. I don't necessarily want to edit it and I'm going to deploy this project so it can be nicely used in the field without the rest of that that uh, background and I'm going to have all those features that I'm going to be able to do some editing with. I'm going to hit next. If you're dealing with pictures, if you have uh, fields attached to your uh, feature class where you might be taking a picture with your particular GPS unit of a tree that you're recording information for or of a bench, you might want to specify where the fields are for these pictures. <coughs> this is very important here. You want to make sure that your spatial extent is set to the current display extent. I would not recommend doing otherwise because otherwise you're going to have a lot of memory taken up for the rest of that raster that is not needed. Specify a name for the folder that will be created to store the data. This is where you're going to want to stay with your, your scheme. I just kept it as my project up here. So I have Priory HUPJP as the folder. This way everything is consistent. I'm not wondering what is what. Where do you want this folder to be stored? I want that to be stored in my check in and check out folder. What do I name this uh, APM? The same as my ArcMap project. So this is the APM file. This is what everything's going to be deployed in. Priory UPJP, same as the project. This is a very good thing. All nice. I want to get the data on this computer now. Uh, I, I wouldn't worry about the CAB files. Uh, there's some issues with CAB files. Uh, you, you can try it, but it's there's just it's not that great. And then I hit finish and it is getting the data ready to go in ArcPad. Once that's done, then what we can do is we can take a look at that in Explorer or in, you can look in Arc Catalog, but I'm going to show you this in Explorer.
And what we have is in data, I have my check in, check out. And what you'll see is I have my geodatabase there. I have my MXD project there, but I also have these APO files that are important for that check in and check out procedure. I also have my folder with all that data for ArcPad right there. Now it's not going to show up as individual files because remember we're in Explorer. But we're good to go. What you want to do at this point is you want to, just in case you have any oops moments, copy and paste. Create a copy of that. This is your backup in case you have any issues ever in your deployment. This is all your original material of that deployed stuff. So this one, what you're going to do is you are going to cut that file. And the reason why you're going to cut is because then you can just replace it when you paste it back in from your GPS. It'll have all your goodies on it. You're going to cut it. And I don't have it hooked up right now, but I would paste it into the proper location on the GPS unit. I would say to create a folder for your field projects on the GPS unit, maybe even call it the, the checked out material folder, and then paste it right into that folder on your storage card. So I would have that cut and then paste it on there. That concludes this portion. What I'll show you in the next portion is how you can bring that material back in from the field.